back to Four Corners of the Galley. I'm your host, Peebo, and you're joining me on Westworld, the Shogun episode. Yeah, that's right. Not about that. We get to, uh, we're in Westworld again, folks. We're on What the Bleep Westworld, and we're all the way up to episode five, Akini no Ma. I hope I said that right. I was trying real hard. But we get the introduction of Shogun World. So yeah, folks, we're moving right along. We're halfway through the season, and we're at a big pivotal point because we're getting a brand new world that we have not yet seen that they tease in the first season, and we finally get to full realization of this world and what it looks like. So do a little things a little differently because there's only one scene that actually has the current timeline. I'm going to give you a quick little reference on the quick, on the current timeline. Then you give you a quick reminder on just Bernard. I'm sorry, not Bernard. <laughs> just Dolores and Teddy's and Maeve's timeline. And then we'll jump right into the recap for the episode and we'll finish this all off. Hopefully the Samurais won't catch us. All right. So let's kick into the current timeline. All right, so with the uh, current timeline, let me just give you a quick little reference. So this is the actual present day timeline, the one that matters. This is the one that they're trying to trick you with. So the way it works is like this. Westworld season one ends, Bernard and Charlotte on the run. Then we have a giant question mark because we have no idea how Bernard washes up on shore, rescued by Stubbs, Carl, and all the mercenaries. They end up seeing all the hosts dead in the water, and then... Bernard and Carl meet back up with Charlotte inside of the main tower of Delios where they run Westworld. And that's where we live them, and that's where we catch them back up again. So let's start off this episode. So on this episode, uh, we start back off, and uh, we catch up with Bernard. And Bernard is, um, he's there, and they're inside of the Delios, and they're in the map room. And there are bodies everywhere. I mean... It's a massacre. They said it was a massacre, and it's a massacre inside. They're collecting all the bodies. They're collecting information. Bernard's just kind of stumbling around. He doesn't really know what they're going, what's going on. And Carl is just like kind of lost. So he goes to one of his, the main engineer guy he has, and he asks him what, what's going on. And he tells him like, uh, bad news, man. Like half the, almost a third of their information of theirs is missing in the actual their little brain their their things that they're pulling out their brains and their information where they're keeping their cpus that a third of the information is missing uh things are going bad and it seems like they're purging themselves and then he shows a picture of like one of these server hubs that blow that is blown up or burned and it's got all their backup information and he goes great we just lost a third of our ip in this one raid that they did so they show all this madness going on and at the same time you got to catch it Bernard's staring in this room and there's a pile of bodies and who's on that pile nobody but Teddy and they show us how he gets there but that's how they kind of leave us and then we kick back to the other timeline so let's give you a quick reference on the timelines we're going to go into and so let's start off with the Dolores and Teddy timeline so as you can see in what has happened going on we've had a lot go on and in the last episode right before the last one uh, we had the big battle of Delios versus the Confederate soldiers. And then at the end of that, after Peter Abernathy, uh, Dolores' father, gets away, she tells Teddy, we need to go back to Sweetwater. So that's where we re-catch him up. So here we are. We're back in this episode, and Dolores and Teddy are back in Sweetwater. And what was she looking for? Well, it looks like she was looking for the train because the train is sitting there and she's got this big smile on her face. So now she's super excited. She tells her horde, clean it up, get it working and let's get moving. So she wants the train moving and then her and Teddy go and have this conversation. So this whole episode in the Dolores and Teddy timeline is basically Dolores giving Teddy his one last night before she ends his life. I mean, she was so calculated in what she did. She already had a plan. And if you remember, the reason she feels this way is because she feels betrayed by Teddy because he didn't kill that captain in the last episode. She told him to take the dog out back and end him, and he refused and let him go. So she feels betrayed. So I don't feel like she can trust Teddy. So what she does, what she does is she takes Teddy, and they go on this great little last little moments being inside of the bar and having great conversation and then she takes him out to where they always talked about paintings and different things of that nature and then and then she has 
their magical night with each other, which I don't think we've ever seen. I think this may be even the first time they've ever done this. So they have that great moment. But at the end of it, she was just cold and calculated. She's telling Teddy the story about how her father and how these cows were getting infected because the flies were infecting the cows. And he goes, she asked Teddy, what would you do? He goes, why well, would separate them and put them in an area where it wasn't air and so you can save them? She goes, oh, that's nice. I'll think about that. And he goes, he goes oh, yeah, what'd your dad do? He, he burned them and saved the herd. <laughs> so you already knew she was already calculated calculating to change Teddy up. So they have this great moment. Then she takes Teddy into this weird, like, torture room with all these bodies and has all of her has her horde in there grab her, grab him, and hold him down. And then you find out that Dolores still has one of the actual human workers with her, with her, and she takes his levels all the way up and is going to basically make him evil at the end of it because she wants him to do his bidding and he wasn't listening. So she's now going to change him. But what we do know is in the at some point. Teddy's Teddy's dead or the body of Teddy's dead because that look that Bernard was giving to the body of Teddy was kind of weird. So there might be some funny stuff there. I don't know yet, but there's some theories out there and it might be leading to that because he's staring at his at the body of Teddy and he's got like some weird expressions on his face. So that definitely was weird, but he goes evil at the end. So some things have definitely changed and that's where we leave Dolores and Teddy. Obviously their episode is going to get way more intense going forward, but now she has a train and Teddy is now evil. <laughs> so let's kick over to the Maeve storyline because that's where the whole episode takes place. And we're going to catch back up where Maeve left off and where we're going. All right, so let's kick over to Maeve. All right, so the Maeve timeline. This is like the Maeve, Lee, and Hector, but it's like May and Lee. And May. It's Maeve. It's Maeve. So Maeve's like on her own little journey. She's in the search for her daughter, and she's been all around Westworld since the end of season one. As you can see, we've been tracking her. She's been moving through the different events, crosses paths with Dolores. Uh, Snake gets away from some Native Americans before she's killed and then ends up at the end of the, of the last episode we saw them where a samurai is about to chop her and it just goes black. So they do a great job and they start this episode exactly where we ended it with the samurai coming. And I remember at the end of the episode when I recapped it, I thought that maybe she might stop his motor function or Hector will shoot him. Instead, she just moves out the way and doesn't get killed. She then attempts to try to talk and communicate to the Japanese, the samurai soldier and tell him to stop, seize all motor functions and stop doing it. She says this in English. The guy doesn't listen and ends up gagging her <laughs> and taking them all captured. So now they're all captured. At the same time, the fun and kind of might get annoying part that's going to happen with this is Lee is our tour guide because Lee knows everything that goes on in this giant Westworld world where all these different parts. So Lee's helping guide Maeve through these things. But what I don't want is I don't want Maeve and Lee to be just this device to show us all these different worlds because as much as I love Shogun World and what they show us, I would have loved to see Shogun World when it was just operating normally and po and people and hosts were act were interacting at the one time and we could have seen what this great world looked like when it doesn't go off kilter because this is what happens when we get to this show gun world everything is off kilter there's there's no regular scenario so that's kind of the fun so Lee starts telling uh, Maeve that basically Shogun World was created for people that feel that Westworld was too tame so this world is even harder and I must admit. When I was watching and I was thinking about if I go to show good one, I would. I definitely would try. But I would have been like working out and training like on my sword play because as you can see, there is no guns. And it is straight up ninjas and samurais and old school warriors. I mean, and you got to be in some fit shape to go against these dudes. So he starts telling him about that stuff and all these different things. And then he also gives May a little tip. He tells her, look, they probably didn't understand you because you weren't speaking in their language. And she, he was explaining to her that she was a hostess and that she's fluent in so many languages. So this clicks in Maeve's brain that, oh, wait a second. Okay. I wasn't saying it in the proper tongue. So she now, you know, going forward, she starts speaking Japanese. So they go on this little journey and you're like seeing all these kind of similarities and even the crew starting similarities. So this great opening scene that they give us of Shogun World is just done beautifully. Basically, it is an exact mimic of Hector, Artemis, and his crew. And it's now the Japanese version, samurai version of Hector, Artemis, and their crew taking over their sweet water or their little village and going in. We also get to meet the May version of Shogun World with the with the young lady that she cares about. So they got this great action scene where it completely mimics it. Hector and Artemis are like, what's going on? This looks too... Just a fabulous scene. Fabulous scene. 
they end up all becoming friends. And uh, this is really freaking Lee out because he's like, this is not supposed to happen this way. These people aren't supposed to meet each other. And Maeve turns to him and goes, you just stole our store. He's like, well, I got to break 300 stories in like a day or two or a week. You got you to gotta fudge a few. So the two Artemis characters are like weirdly tripping out on each other. And they're all interacting. So the Maeve... And then and then and the uh, the Japanese version of the Mave are you know having their dialogue and everything, and a story's progressing and Lee's telling about the story and all of a sudden Shogun's like top admiral shows up and he wants a private dance from this young lady, and and uh, and Lee is telling Mave oh this is a good story uh, you know she's gonna have to give up the young lady and send her on because you know she's gonna be heartbroken but it's gonna go that way well it doesn't go that way what ends up happening is she ends up stabbing the guy through the throat and killing him and he's like oh it's not supposed to go that way so he already knows at this point that this world has already been tainted and things are off the rails so they end up killing one of these one of the main guy shoguns who's this ruler of this world's top admiral he ends up showing sending ninjas at night and these ninjas come out of anywhere this big fight in source and this is when we find out Maeve has a power that no one else has and who knows what this is leading to Basically, Maeve, telepathically, as she's getting choked out by a ninja, goes into his mind and makes him impale himself against the uh, the wall and his thing and kills another guy without even speaking to him. One of the ninjas freaks out and calls her a witch and then bounces and all the ninjas leave. And he's like, Lee's freaking out. Oh my God, they said ninjas. We don't know what's going to happen. Then out of nowhere, Shogun's army shows up and it really gets crazy. Now Lee's freaking out because... The ninjas aren't supposed to show up, let alone Shogun's army show up. So they devise a plan. Hector, Artemis, and one of the other ladies end up sacrificing themselves for them to escape. They try to escape with Lee, uh, Maeve, the, uh, the Japanese Maeve, which I cannot remember her name. And they're trying to get back uh, Sakura. Sakura, I think, is her name, which is the young lady. And she was taken by the ninjas from Shogun. So they come up with a plan where they're going to pose as Chinese ambassadors and kind of walk into Shogun's camp to try to uh, get back this young lady. It's kind of... It, almost exactly mirrors Maeve and her path and what she wants to do. It's the whole thing. She's fighting for her daughter. Uh, Shakura is her daughter. They're both great, elegant, you know, uh, Japanese dancers, and Shogun is trying to control them. They get to the camp. They have this big standoff, but what we learn is Shogun is broken like Bernard. He's got leakage coming out of his ear, the same white leakage coming out of his ear. So he's already twisted. So that's why he's way off the rails, because there is no controlling him. Also, at the same time, Maeve comes in and tries to talk in Japanese to all the soldiers to make them do something. None of them listen. Why? Because Shogun heard that there was a witch, ends up cutting off all of the ears of all of his soldiers so they cannot be twisted by Maeve. <laughs> Just straight up crazy. So they have this big to-do about things. You know, Shogun ends up killing Sakura, which he knew was going to happen. And then you got uh, the, uh, the Japanese Maeve. She starts dancing. She ends up killing Shogun, which you knew was going to happen. And then Maeve rises up. And this is where I feel like it gets kind of a mixture of iRobot mixed with uh, Westworld, where I feel like maybe Westworld is still a little iRobot. Because now Maeve has basically become the Vicky of the iRobots. And the Vicky was this main brain that controlled all the other different robots and made all the fun made them, you know, help out functions and stuff like that. She's also the one that made all the robots turn against the humans in iRobot. Well, now Maeve has the power of basically Vicky. She doesn't even have to say anything. She's telepathically starts talking to these Japanese soldiers and they all all just start killing themselves so now Maeve has complete control where she's saying she's found her own voice and she has kinetic powers over everybody so now she's even bigger than she is I definitely feel like there's gonna be some duel at the end or something at the end between Dolores and Maeve where one of them got to kill the other one or something like that because both of them are becoming way too powerful and they're gonna cross paths again I feel like something bigger is gonna happen but it ends up where Maeve gets you know they're going to go on their mission, and they killed all these Shogun uh, warriors, and they're still going about their day. I mean, it was a very unique and interesting episode. I was definitely hyped for Shogun World. I love the beginning, but it 
it's like they kind of like didn't give a big time storytelling. Like I said, I wanted to see this world before it all went crazy so we could have seen the beauty of it. But they mostly just kind of mirror the whole entire Westworld story and it's just like the exact same story just played out in Shogun World, which I thought was kind of lackluster. I wish I was hoping for a little more. Now, I also hope that we do get to see some other worlds, but it's just not Maeve and Lee always showing it to us. Is it fun? Yes, because I love listening to Lee say things and everything goes backwards in the wrong way. But still, I want a little more substance. But... There you go, folks. That's episode five. Uh, let me see if I can get this right again. It is called Akina Noma. Until next week, guys. Good night, Ted.